now, whilst conspiracy theories around chemtrails have been debunked by science, the white lines in the sky that planes leave behind do have a damaging impact on the climate. But a new study has found that small changes to flight paths, well, they could reduce the impact of flying by as much as 40%. Professor Rob Miller is the Little Web Lab Director at the University of Cambridge. Um, thanks for joining us on the line. Um, so, first of all, explain to viewers who don't know what chemtrails are and, and why people get so worried about them. Well, thanks for having me on. Um, ca can I just start by saying that uh, aviation as a sector at currently is not on track to achieve net zero by 2050, but that governments and industries together are all keen and willing to take the challenge on, but we really need to focus. And so at Cambridge, we brought together a group of world experts to develop a plan, a focused plan, which if put into action, we believe over the next five years can put us on the track to net zero um, by 2050. Now, and you, talk, you talked no, about ahead, chemtrails sorry. and contrails. Do you want me to move on to that? Yes, yes, do, because obviously people look up in the sky, don't they, and they see those white lines behind the planes. For some, it's really pretty, but for others, there are real concerns about what's in them and how they might affect people. So chemtrails are just a conspiracy theory, but what is important is that about one, one in 20 flights, that thin white line grows into a cloud, a cirrus cloud, and those clouds trap in heat. We'll know that on a cloudy day, it feels warmer than when the sky has no clouds. And that warming effect means that that one in 20 flights, the, the cloud formed by it in one day does the same amount of warming as the CO2 from the 20 flights do, does over 100 years. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty, but we think the effect of contrails, the cloud formation, and the CO2 effects of aviation are broadly of a similar magnitude. But we can do something about it. And tell us that exactly, because the study did reveal um, a relatively simple fix that could change how things are. Well, the region of airspace where these clouds form are like thin pancakes. And so when you're flying through them, if we can determine when these form, the altitude of the aircraft can be changed up or down. And this will increase the fuel burn of the flight by about 1%. But we think if we could urgently set up large trials like over the North Atlantic, over Scotland, over Europe, that we could learn by doing in this process. And we could get relatively cheaply and relatively quickly up to a 40% reduction in the climate impact of aviation, which is a great news. What's been the reaction to this news? Well, there's growing enthusiasm in the field for setting up these large areas of airspace and trying these experiments. A number of areas of the world are thinking about it. The EU is thinking about a scheme. The UK is starting to think about a scheme. But what we're saying in the report is this needs to be done with urgency over the next five years. But this is just one of the four things we think need to be done if we're going to achieve net zero in the aviation sector by 2050. Why do you think there's so much um, worry around chemtrails? And also, I suppose more specifically, why it was so important for scientists to debunk those conspiracy theories? Well, it takes up a lot of media airtime. And what people really should be talking about is, is uh, effectively contrails and how we switch those off. We believe also across the whole aviation system, if we could put together policies which would make the aviation system more efficient, we think you could half fuel burn by 2050. We also think that the fuel we burn, sustainable aviation fuel, we need to put in place policies which make sure that we don't damage the environment, the land we use, where we grow all the crops to make the future fuels. And finally, we believe that we should launch several moonshot demonstrators designed to 
rapidly assess new technologies like electric, hydrogen, or methane. If we did all four of these, I think the aviation industry could put itself on track to net zero by 2050. You're a superstar, Professor Miller. Thank you so much for your time on Sky News. Thank you for having me.